Indoor Arena here in Birmingham and to Gladiators The Challenge. Now, every year we get more and more applicants for contenders and this year certainly was no exception. So to add a little bit of spice to the show, we decided to split the United Kingdom into half and tonight's four contenders all represent the northern half. And as usual, we've got some fantastic prizes lined up for you. For the winners and the runners-up. And firstly, the runners-up. They're going to get a fantastic holiday in one of the most beautiful holiday resorts in the world, South Africa's Sun City, plus a thousand pounds. And wait for the winners, because the winners are also going to get a thousand pounds, plus one of these luxurious four-wheel drive, off-the-road family vehicles. on in the show we'll be taking a peek at what the gladiators got up to at their winter training camp at coco beach in luxurious and gorgeous mauritius <laughs> oh we have so much for you and there's more tonight's female northern contenders are jude shenton and karen skull No, I need to take them everywhere. They make me feel a bit younger and hopefully give me more energy tonight. I should hope you are quite young, aren't you? Tell us a bit more about yourself, what you do and where you're from. Um, I'm in the Army and I'm the Army Physical Training Corps. And I work in South Wales at the moment with a lot of apprentices, the rowdy bunch over there. Yes, I have noticed we have a very, very noisy crowd behind you. Are there any, is there anyone in particular apart from the apprentices you wish to say hello to? Yeah, there's uh, all the family as well and also the Blast Ski Team, they should be there too. Yes, they sound as if they're there. What do you like to do in your spare time, dude, to keep fit? Uh, I tend to sort of stick to the outdoors, the climbing, canoeing, paving and that sort of thing. And are you at your fittest now? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you better say yes, because <laughs> we'll be looking out for you. Let's hear it for Jude Shenton. Okay, Karen, I've got to say, the noise in here is absolutely deafening. Karen, where do you come from? I'm from Bolton. Oh, 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 I was afraid you were going to say that. And what do you do for a living? I'm a van driver and I work part-time as a trampolining coach. That's an unusual occupation, a van driver. How did you get into that? It was just that there's no women drivers, so I thought, I'll have a go at that. Tell me, what do you do in your spare time? I do a lot of sports, I do a lot of stock car racing, a bit of everything, really. Tell us about the trials, because you've got an interesting story with your sister, haven't you, with the trials. Tell us about it. Well, it was at the trials, everyone was getting excited and everything, then all of a sudden, my sister's waters broke and um, she had a baby girl. Well, there you are. It's going to be an interesting night. Off you go. Get yourself ready. Karen Scrolls. Well, we've met the girls. Let's meet the guys. Tonight they are Glenn Wilkinson. And Buster Reed. Tell us a bit about yourself, where you're from and what you do. Well, I'm a fitness instructor from a beautiful part of the world in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Oh, wonderful. I love it. It's great. Looks to me as if you've got one or two supporters there. So, what sort of things do you like to do, keeping fit-wise? Well, I do uh, a lot of different uh, sporting, mountain biking, running, sprinting, just generally looking after my body. And so, what's been your inspiration for coming on to Gladiators? Well, I'm just very privileged to be here. Uh, my main inspiration is my faith. I'm a born-again Christian, and I'm just happy to be here. Well, I understand you've got some people that have come all the way from Belfast from your church, is that right? They're from the White Whale Tabernacle in Belfast, and they've paid a lot of money to come here, so they're just brilliant. They're great. Well, I hope you'll give them a good show tonight. Let's hear it for Glenn Wilkinson. OK, Buster, now you're from Huddersfield. Tell us, what do you do for a living? They're all in, the, all in the house. What do you do for a living? I'm a surface layer in Manchester. And any hobbies, anything else? Yeah, I also do uh, kickboxing most of my time. A lot of running, but mainly uh, emphasizing kickboxing. Now that's right, now you're a little bit humble there, shall we say, because you are actually the world champion kickboxing, am I right? That's correct, yeah, yeah. I went to New Zealand and fought for the world championship in Auckland and I were good enough to win it. 
And also, and I'm sorry to bring this up, but you also broke, you were on the world record breakers, was it? The record breakers, you broke the record for a certain amount of kicks in a minute. That's correct, I did um, 218 head kicks in a minute. Oh, Buster, Buster, you've got to show us some of these. You've got to show us what made you world champion. Go on. Oh. Yes, 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 I can see why. Okay, Buster, save your breath, get yourself ready. Let's hear it for Buster Reed. Come well on. to see him Buster a little later on. Well, the girls are ready for their first event, so let the games begin. <laughs> event number one. Suspended upside down above the arena floor, it's Karen and Jude. <laughs> and they're going to be pursued by Falcon and Nightshade. Over to John Anderson. Contenders, ready! Ladies, ready! Three, two, one! And they're off and running in this Grand National Indoor Arena. Off the first bend, it's Jude in the lead and pulling away from Karen. Karen struggling first to finish 10 points, second five, unless they're caught by the glance just like the way Karen's been caught by Falcon. Smoke streaming from a detonator like a blown engine. And on the right of your screen, Nightshade looks to have a problem. In time, Jude's on for an easy 10 points. Karen still waiting, but her finish won't count. Well, Jude thought she was in for a fight up there, but for Nightshade to pull up, there must be a good reason. Jude's family there. Meanwhile, Nightshade's nursing her neck. In the replay, it's clear to see that lead because Jude's not obscured. She's followed by Karen, but the Falcon's fired up and Karen's fired out of the race. Nightshade, help from the arena, acknowledges the roar of the crowd. Disappointment for Nightshade and her fans. So after that incident-packed first event, Jude's on 10, Karen still to score. and Trojan. Over to John Anderson. Contenders, ready! Ready, girls, ready! Three, two, one! The race is on. Glenn in red, Buster in blue. Glenn hits the bend first and Trojan hits his detonator. Explosive stuff from Trojan. Now it's all about Buster and Saracen. Buster keeping his gladiator at bay as they hit the top straight. Glenn still running. At least he can use the sky track for a workout. Saracen struggling to make any inroads on Buster's lead. Buster looking confident and comfortable. He's probably even holding some back, not wanting to bust a blood vessel. Ten points and the family delighted. And let's also admire the speed of Trojan straight off the starting blocks. He makes Glenn sparks fly. So, with only four events to go, still to score is Glenn, while Buster has ten. Sports facilities here at Cocoa Beach are tremendous, and we all have great fun trying them out. But there's one room we really take seriously. It's here, the gym. The guys work up to three hours a day here, getting their bodies in shape for the series. Let's go in and take a look. What I'm working here is primarily the chest muscles. I'm also working some shoulders and some triceps, which is the back of the arm. This is the lat pull down thing. It works the whole of the back. It's a good exercise for the pendulum and hang tough. Oh, there you are, Rhino. Hey, you're looking good. It's a brilliant gym, isn't it? Sure is. Great canteen, too. Oh, I can see that. Hey, I know you like working out. What's your favourite thing to do in the gym? Me? I just love pumping iron. Go for it, Rhino. I was born to pump iron. Did somebody mention iron? Yeah. Best art. And mine? Yeah, mine too. But listen, be careful with the top, because it's expensive. The old pumping iron gag, eh? I just love being a gladiator. Her yellow hat 
atmosphere, ready to do battle, is Karen. And in the orange sphere, is June. is joined together for the famous Atlasphere's Anthem. Over to John Anderson. Check pods for smoke. Limey. He's disappeared in a puff of smoke. I think John Anderson's done too many pantos. Starts the ball rolling for 60 seconds of metallic mayhem, driving a cage across the arena for the first collision. And her first strike is on Jude. And Karen drives a Baker's van for a living and needs to get on a roll here. But Jude in pink is going for the points and just fails. Oh, here's Karen with space on pod two. Yes, she's not seen smoke like that since someone burnt the cakes at work. Good free pointer from Lancashire last there, looking for another pod. The Panthers there to punish her impudence. Hey, Jude's on for pod four. Bo's got her fired up. Oh, and smoked out. Super scoring from the Army PTI. Karen does some spare time stock car racing. She's certainly outpacing Panther, but failing to make it count. Karen flicks her cage into reverse. Spots some space on pod one. A free run. Can she middle it? Yeah, oh, no. Panther's late for the ball, but no smoke is no joke. Karen making the breaks, but can't make them pay. But look at Jude, three for a crack at three, gets a result right on the hooter. Jude's family and friends are sea of smiles, and here's the girl of the moment. Oh. Hey, Jude. Yes, we've already done that line, Elite. You didn't make it too bad. That wasn't too bad, was it? I think I only got one, but I think it was very good. She was on me the whole time. It was excellent, good fun, I love that one. Well, it looked as if you were enjoying it, and I always like to bring the bearer of good news. You scored on two points, you got six points! Yeah, well done, it's hard work in there, isn't it? It is hard, yeah. I thought I could do it. Uh, well, that's all right. Well, long way to go. You got yourself three points! Well done, Karen. Well, Karen's fans right behind her and on top of each other. So, scanning the scoreline after the second event, Jude consolidates her lead while Karen gets off the mark, 16-3. Right, and straight into the lane. And in the yellow sphere is Buster. And in the orange, it's Glenn. And they're going to be facing the Trojan and the Wolfman. Over to John Anderson. Contender! From Belfast, the ball that metallic mandarin rolls himself into the arena. Buster in the yellow thunderball, very fast. Cannons off, Wolf and Trojan, and sets himself up for a free go at four. Can he middle it? No, rims it. Fails to score, plans his next move. Glenn finds himself between the edge of the arena and Trojan. Trojan, a superb tactician in this event. Buster being kept wide by Wolfman, who seems to be strolling in his sphere. Buster looking to make a move on pod one, but Wolf's content to just do enough to keep him out. Wolf supremely confident in total control. Someone's taught him those tactics, he'd never have figured them out for himself. Glenn getting up ahead of steam. This is easy! What's he doing, the Wolf baiting Buster? Wolf, let him out! And the referee doesn't like it. John Anderson is blowing his top. Oh, the crowd have gone ugly. Not as ugly as Wolf, though. Well, the Gladiator's doing a grand job there, it has to be said. Total domination of the Atmosphere Arena. No point scored. Wolf has the measure of the event and of Buster without working up a sweat. Fash is with the Glads. Clean sheet. Well done. Very good, mate. Very happy with that. Sorry, God's Such a bad man.
Great to be back in the atmospheres again. Uh, good thing, Dad. Nice. Well done. Thank you. Wolfman, it, hate, it hurts me to say it. It really hurts me. But well done. Uh, oh, don't, I hate saying come that. Come on. Give credit where it was due. I was just fantastic. Oh. Told you. I feel like a wave of nausea now. I don't feel, yeah. I don't feel too good. But. Well, I've got to say, Trojan, well done, and the Wolfman, well done. Hello, mate. Hey, yeah, buddy. <laughs> Wolf with his impression of the late Sidney James there. So after two events, the guy's scores fail to progress. Glenn stays on zero, Buster on ten. Now let's move right along into the next event. <laughs> and the first up to Whiplash is Jude. Rebel making her point to us, and Jude has a point to make as well. I like the National Series because it, it means that people at home watching TV can relate to the contenders. They can be sat there thinking, yeah, I can understand that guy. One minute he's working nine to five, the next minute he's like there on the show. And that inspires people maybe, I think, to go out there themselves and join in activities join in the sports world, you know, and get fit and stay fit. So it's it's good show in that, in that for that cause. Three, two, one. Oh, the rebel yanks June into action in this whiplash ring. The army PTI has got 30 seconds in which to pull rank on Rebel and heave her out of the circle or make her drop the dog bone to score 10. Judy from Powers will need plenty of power to achieve that goal. Rebel swinging her about like a rag doll at the moment. Oh, she's let go. Ten points to Jude. And it has to be said, this is one of the least favourite events of the Gladiators. Well done, Jude. Just come over this side for a minute. That was hard work. Rebel, wow. I didn't think she was going to finish that. That was a long 30 seconds. Well done. You got yourself your ten points. saw you psyching yourself up. You were in a mean, mean mood. What happened? I reckon she put a little bit of butter in there somewhere. But no, yeah, I mean, because she was pulling so strong, she actually pulled it from away from my arm. So there was, there was nothing I could do. She's very strong. So all credit to her. Fair's fair. She won. Well done, Jude. And it's here for Rebo. Jude's family happy with another 10-point before. It's Karen. She's going to be facing Rio! Rio, the Grand Glad, taking a look at her facts and figure. She stands 1 metre 87 tall and weighs in at 83 kilos, which means that Karen will find herself 7 centimetres shorter and 16 kilos lighter than Rio. Three, two, one! Karen heaves into action in the whiplash ring. Even with her van driving, stock car racing and trampoline tuition, she somehow manages to find time to be a special police constable. But this is pounding a very different beat. Oh, Karen managing to get to the edge of the circle, but Rio won't succumb beyond the circumference. Basically, she won't be pulled out. What the hand will be? What the hand will be? Referee reminding Karen it's not a two-handed job. Rio doing just enough to keep the clean sheet. It's effort by Karen. Good, solid performance from the Gladiator. Rio congratulates Karen on her resilience. There's Karen's sister, Melanie, and her dad, Alan. So after three events, Jude moves up to 26. Karen stays stuck on three. OK, straight into the men. And the first up is Glenn. And he's going to be facing all 20 stone of him, the mighty warrior. Glenn doesn't look best pleased, he figured this might happen. He'll probably be up against a warrior who's 18 stones and 6 foot 5. And I'm about 5 foot 9 with my high boots on. But um, it's a bit like David and Goliath. And we all know what happened there, so I'm quite confident. No slingshot here, just a shot at slinging Warrior around, and the odds are against it, but Warrior has been beaten in the whiplash ring, it's just a question of catching him off balance. Oh yes, just like that, Glenn fells the Giants, and there's his girlfriend Julianne, she's gone potty, and Glenn's not too disappointed with that himself. Glenn, congratulations! Oh my goodness! 
Like David and Goliath, that was it. Yes! Men, all 20 stone of him. Well, it's the wee man with the big heart that came through, so I'm a Belfast lad, and I'm just so happy I've got some points. Points? You got yourself 10 points, and you deserve it. Big man, what happened? I found that, yeah, you did very well. I fell over my own feet then, and uh, once you lose your balance, you go on the floor, and you can't get dragged off. So that's the way it goes. Well, you did very well. Good sport. Let's hear it for Warrior. And of course, Glenn, 10 points. <laughs> and the last of the battle contenders is the world champion, it's Buster. <laughs> and he's going to be battling it out against the Hunter. Well, here's a real clash of the titans. Buster from Newsom Huddersfield stands an impressive 1 meter 82 while weighing 79 kilos. But up against the hunter, he'll find himself 8 centimeters shorter and 27 kilograms lighter. They take the strain. Let's get it on. Oh, and Hunter rips it off. Hunter wrenches the dog bone from Buster, and it's all over in less than three seconds. Buster looks disgusted, and Hunter Buster, looks like Bruce Forsyth. Lost the grip of the dog bone. Yeah. What happened? I'm not making excuses. The guy's good, he's strong. Do that next time. Well, let's have a word with Hunter. Hunter, impressive stuff. Psyched yourself up, as always. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> this game's a lot about mental strength. You've got to be real psyched up for it. I was a little bit cross beforehand, so, uh, you know, I was ready for the game. Obviously, going up against someone like Buster, world champion, kickbox champion. It's a little bit harder, isn't it, than normal contender? Yeah, but he wasn't kicking me in the head this time. <laughs> well done, Hunter. Please, Jay. Well done. It's over, Hunter and Buster. Good job. Buster's family graciously applauding Hunter's achievement, and those shock results mean that with two events to go, Glenn has drawn level at ten apiece. Combination of sailing and surfing? It's called windsurfing. It's all about sailing skills, grace and balance. Although when you're learning, it can sometimes be very difficult. In fact, it's when you're learning, you must realise you're going to make a complete fool of yourself. Hey, folks, I'd like to learn to windsurf. See what I mean? Oh. Event number four. First up to hang tough, it's Jude. Looking to put Jude to flight. Falcon, a firm favourite with the fans and a proven expert on the rings. Beautiful, easy action. Jude knows she's got her work cut out up there. Looks anxious. So does her mum. Falcon patrolling the skies with confidence. Oh, Jude swung into the scoring zone. But the Falcon swoops the counter straight into the trap and Jude's in trouble. Can she hang up? No! She's gone! Well, that was a textbook takedown by the Falcon. A good old matte finish. Quick, clean, and a minimum of fuss. Well, if we look at it again, Jude commits the most cardinal sin on Hang Tough. She's turned her back on the Gladiator, so Falcon can trap her on the blind side. Rebel's tail of the tape will see that she's actually 10 centimetres taller than Karen and three kilos heavier. Three, two, one. So Karen will score five for hanging tough in the scoring zone when the time up sounds, or 10 points for reaching the Rebel's platform. 
this is the first hang tough outing for Rebel, and she's moving comfortably, and so the smiling Karen Scholes. The Bolton Wanderers moving around the rings very well indeed. She's got acres of space on this wing. She finds herself well into the scoring zone, and Rebel well out of position. Rebel trying to get back to cover, but we could be in for an upset here. Karen poised for the platform. She's won rings, but the swing's in her favour. Rebel can't get her. Karen in one tantalising ring from ten points. Time's on her side. Still one rings. Can't get the swing right. Rebel's right out of it. She's got a ring. She's out for ten. She's there. Karen scores ten points from Hang Tough. The girl from the bakery takes the biscuit. And that's some celebration dance. Even brings a smile to Rebel's face. The Skulls family celebrate from the oldest right down to the youngest. I don't want to say because she was really amazing and she just ran away with it. She was excellent. And once I thought I could get her, then I thought, look, you know, I was looking at the way that she was positioning herself. And I thought she's got to swing my way, but she did. She kept her head. Hey, great. All credit to her. Absolutely. You little monkey, you. Thank you. I can't believe I've done it myself. It was really annoying. I've never seen that system. It was kind of looking but it worked. I don't know what came over me, honestly, I don't know. Yeah, fun. how would you like 10 points? Brilliant, I need 10 points. You Thank certainly you. do. Let's hear it for Karen and well done to the level. That maximum brings Karen back into the frame. With only one event to go, Jude stays on 26 points while Karen swings to 13. Great performance. Hunter's personally kept Buster out of the points this evening. Will he be doing the same to Glenn? Why isn't she singing? swing out and Glenn will do well to come away with anything from this Hunter almost halfway across with two mighty swings look at that on station at the edge of the scoring zone and Glenn needs to keep his wits about him here Hunter swinging in with an attack there's a tangle of legs and all this is happening 10 feet above the arena floor Hunter in a commanding position at the moment Glenn straining to keep Hunter at bay and Mum Bell straining as well she can hardly look He's won rings at the moment, we're still half a minute to go. Glenn's swinging about, not really in control, but there's nothing Hunter can do about it until he manoeuvres himself into a better attack position. Hunter getting into all sorts of trouble up there now. He's one ringed on the edge of the scoring zone. Managed to get a grip of another red, but he's a long way short of getting a grip of Glenn. And Glenn hanging like a one-string puppet at the moment. He's not in the scoring zone, so won't register any points in that position. Hunter's extraordinary, even when he has a tough time, he still manages to mark the contenders out for points. Well, resilient effort by both guys, but no points to show for it. A great surprise was Hunter managing to get himself into a real mess, reaching for a red and very nearly giving the game away. Next up on Hunter, it's Buster! And he's going to be facing our new gladiator, Ace! Buster told me how he got on the show. In the beginning, it was just me and my mate applied for a joke. Never thought I'd get this far, and now I'm on the show, it's unbelievable, because normally on a Saturday night, I'm sat in, watching it on the telly, swinging from the lampshades when Hang Tough's on. But now I'm in the thick of it, on the telly. Just can't believe it's happening. Three, two, one! First Hang Tough outing for the ace. But look at this. Makes it to the red in just two swings. Buster, a road layer by profession, so he's more comfortable on the ground than he is at this height. Goes for a ring and misses it. Danger of being one ring, but he recovers. It's aces high at the moment as he tries to engage Buster in aerial combat. All the legs are up, just a bit of range finding. He's back for more, tries to lock him up. It's all a bit of a tangle up there. Buster's in the scoring zone, he's got a handle on a red ring. Ace swings in to re-engage. And Buster defending very well. I think his plan is to hang on for the five rather than progress towards the opposing platform. This time Ace has got him. Ace has got Buster's legs locked up. I must say I'm not sure where they go from here. Buster's grinning. 
And it does appear more like a funfair ride than a gladiator event at the moment. But it looks as though Buster's in the frame for five points. The ace running out of time and ideas on this occasion. And that will do it. Excellent display of sheer strength by Buster. Louisa, the girlfriend there with his dad, Terry, highly delighted with that result. <laughs> well, Buster, it became a battle of the legs there, and I have to say there were, looked like there were quite a few high kicks on your behalf there. Eh? They, don't, they don't call me the fastest kicker in the world for nothing. Absolutely. <laughs> and, well, he had his foot in a rather prominent place, didn't he, Ace? Did he damage you permanently? Or? Hopefully I'm not damaged permanently. I had no problem getting to him, but I just couldn't, couldn't grip him. He was just too slippery. He certainly was. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I haven't heard anything to the contrary. Of course, you were in the scoring zone, so you pick up five points. Well done, Buster. And Ace. And tuck your shirt in, Ali. Glenn stays on 10, Buster moves up to 15. Every morning, all of the gladiators go for a 15 to 20 minute jog as an essential warm up before we go in the gym to train. Jogging is one of the cheapest, simplest, easiest ways to get a good cardiovascular workout. That means working your heart and lungs. Remember, you don't have to be in an exotic location like here at Cocoa Beach. You can go with your friends to the local leisure centre and park and go for a jog there. And moving on is your next event. And up on the platform is June. And she's going to be battling against Puri. Looking at Jude's weights and measures, we'll see that she's 20 centimetres shorter than Rio and 16 kilos lighter. So that could prove highly significant up there where it counts on the platform. Two, one. Army PTI Jude Shenton does a lot of canoeing, but although the actions are the same, a pugil stick is not quite the same as a paddle. Nice combination of headshots from Rio. Jude digging in, fighting back, looking for the chink in Rio's armor. Jude giving her a face full of stick. Have a bit of that. Rio struggling to more action now. Spreading to let a big one go. Oh, and there it is. Right hook to the chops, and she's flying down from Rio. Even Jude's mum Enid is holding her head. That one hurt. Reviewing the action again. Rio tying Jude up, just waiting for the gap to unleash that right hand bomb. Ba boom. What a great signing this gladiator was. Contenders is Karen! And she's going to be battling against the electric lightning! Earlier, Karen told me about one of her favourite weekend pastimes. Stock car racing? I love it. Driving around that track as fast as you can, brilliant. It gives you a really big thrill. But of course, Monday morning comes, and I don't drive like that in my van. Honest. The only heavy goods Karen needs to control now are the blows from Lightning. Oh, and there's one straight away. What a bolt from Lightning, but Karen giving as good as she got there. Three there, what a combination. Straight to the head. And again, and again. Nearly cuts her down off the platform. And Lightning fighting back now. A cracking right to the chops. And Karen soaks it up, and again. She deserves the points for this performance, matching each other, blow for blow. This has got to be one of the finest ladies' jewels in living memory. Right to the end, they're swinging the rights and lefts. The arena rises to acclaim Karen, and so does Lightning. In the playback, we can see that this is the closest Lightning has ever come to being defeated. Karen gets her off balance and teetering on the edge, and just can't finish it. Karen, first of all, congratulations. That's what Gladiator is all about. Nice, clean battle, entertaining stuff. How do you feel? OK, I thought I nearly had her at one point and then she kept on there and got five points. Before you go, Lightning, it really was blow for blow, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Uh, it was difficult to get the hits in because she was so quick, she had really good tactics and those hits were hard. Well, well done, you stayed on, you got yourself five dessert points. Well done, Karen, and let's hear for Lightning. Well, baby Sophie saw most of that. And what a magnificent performance from Karen. It changes the complexion of the scores. Jude stays on 26, while the Bolton battler moves up to 18. And the first of our male contenders to duel is Glenn. And he's going to be facing a Cobra. Over to John Anderson. Contender, ready! Glenn, our 
fitness instructor from Belfast stands 1 metre 75 tall and weighs in at 83 kilos, while Clown Prince Cobra is taller by 8 centimetres and heavier by 10 kilos. A wink from Cobra, let's get ready to rumble. Cobra prods Glenn, then follows with a jab. Wild White from Glenn, punished with a couple to the chin from Cobra. But Cobra's overbalancing. He's touched Glenn's platform with his left hand, and he's disqualified. The crowd are going wild. They're even hitting each other. It's all over in six seconds. Glenn dismounts. Ten points better off. Cobra furious with himself. Fashes down there. Glenn, I don't know how you keep doing this. Well done again. Either did I. <laughs> Glenn, now that was tactics. You were ducking and you were diving. There was a lot of tactics in that. Talk us through it. Well, I've got quite a low centre of gravity, so I decided to uh, try and duck him and keep low, because I've got a big par in my thighs. Well done, you stayed up, he missed his balance, ten points. Well done, Glenn. And he's here the Cobra! Oh, Cobra swings into action. Bit late now, son. And the last of our male contenders is Buster! And he's going to be up against the Wolfman! John Anderson, contender ready! Anderson ready! Oh my God! It's hammer time, the wolf growls. Oh, and how he howls! Oh, Buster Smash in a combination, the wolf is sent packing in under three seconds. That must rank as the fastest ten points ever scored in duel. At least the Wolves managed to get one hit. But remember, this man is the current world champion kickboxer. And the crowd acclaim a moment of gladiator history. Buster's revenge for atmospheres. And Fats has got to try and get some sense out of Wolf now. Good luck. In your own words, what happened? Listen. This guy is the world kickboxing champion. I expected a hard fight. But he just caught me off balance, what can I say? Buster! Well done! Talk us through it, Buster! Well, we're psyching each other out up there. And uh, you shouldn't psych a fighter out, because you'll never win. Wow, Buster! Let me come this side. I think, I think it's probably better if I get in the middle here. Oh, hello. Well, I don't know if Wolf's trying to get a Buster or really hiding behind Fash. Whatever's happening, Wolf will mess his hair up. And there's Buster's grandma, and she's loving every minute of it. And Fash is going wisely, letting Eunice sort it out. There's Buster, proclaimed the hero by his team coach. Incredible scenes in the Gladiator Arena. Those two maximum scores, though, mean that after five events, Glenn moves up to 20 and Buster to 25. Well, after all that excitement, I think we all deserve a break. But don't go away. Join us after the break here on the Gladiators. A woman! Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham, where it's eliminator time in our northern heats. Now, of course, the winner of the fastest eliminator time this year will receive a thousand pounds. Tonight's scoreboard in the women's event, Karen's on 18 points. Jude is ahead on 26 points. That's an eight-point difference, giving Jude a four-second head start. Over to Fash. Jude, you heard what Ollie said. Four seconds head start. It's been a long day. Have you still got enough in those legs to do it? Uh, I hope so. Four seconds. I'm still going to be in that spaghetti junction, and she's going to be hitting me there. That's absolutely nothing. But um, hopefully my sports are going to cheer me the whole way. They've been absolutely fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Thanks very much, guys. OK. Karen, she hasn't got much of a head start. How do you feel? Four seconds. It's not a lot. I do prefer to chase, but we'll just see what happens. June, Karen, both girls, all the best. All together now. Barmy Army. Jude, you will go on my first whistle. Karen, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. 
Well, this will be meat and drink to Jude Shenton. She's an army PTI specialising in adventure training. Here comes Karen Skoll. She drives vans, stock cars, and now she's got to drive herself. Jude tangled in the bungee mesh of Spaghetti Junction. Those grasping tendrils test the strength of your determination, your courage, and your costume. Jude looks to be maintaining her lead. Next comes the rope, and Karen emerges from the undergrowth, trying to escape its interminable grip. Jude's up the rope. Next comes the hand ladder, consolidating that lead. The family willing her to win. Jude finishing the ladder just as Karen starts. Jude struggling to touch down, and Karen swinging very well on the ladder across the rollers. And Karen does seem to be clawing back that head start. Jude up the net. And Karen joins her. Karen really putting together a great performance, a real testament to the fitness of this van driver from Bolton. Jude climbing strongly. This is the kind of stuff she does for a living. And Karen seems to be faltering on the net. Jude's at the top of the zip, grabs the T-bar and swings herself into space for the 90-foot drop. Splashes down just as Karen finishes her net. She looks to be all in, but as Fax always says, on gladiators, you've got to expect the unexpected. Karen on the zipper, here she comes for the safety mat, splash down. Jude's taking her time, raising herself for the test against the Travelator. Here she comes, head up, knees up, and she's up! Jude Shenton from Crick Howell and Powis swings through into the semi-finals of Victory Parade for the Army Girl. And here's Karen. She's not going to be a victim of the Travelator's revenge. Pumps up, working those tired legs. She won't give in. A remarkable performance from Karen Scholes. The Baker's Van driver from Bolton completes the eliminator course. Linda and Alan know their daughter done good. Four seconds, there's not a lot in it. You had the crowd behind you, but you must have been aware all the time that the tiniest mistake could have cost you this. Oh, absolutely. I was so worried about that eliminator. The um, escalator. Travelator. That's the one. Oh, but the crowd was just absolutely brilliant. I'm so pleased. Thank you. I mean, they have been fantastic. Here's a medal just to say that you were here and did very well tonight. It's just bad news for all of us because all of that lot are going to have to come back. First of all, I'm going to give you your medal. Talk us through it. I think, really, you did start the catcher up. I think you may have lost it on the cargo net. Am I right? Yeah. I started OK. Going on to the cargo net, I knew. I just lost my button. That's what put me behind. But you were catching her up. You do realise that? Oh, definitely. I was behind you all the way. So that cargo net, and then when I messed up, then that was it. She'd gone. She'd gone away. It's been a long day, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been brilliant, though. I'd like to thank everybody. I've got it for cheering me on. We've been brilliant. Well, go over and thank all your supporters and all your family. Let's hear the Karen! Let's hear it indeed. There's our winner, Jude. A great performance from her, but that eliminated time of 1 minute 33.2 isn't fast enough to topple the current leader, Sarah Dam, in the £1,000 Fastest Eliminator Challenge. On to the men's competition. Glenn's on 20, Buster 25, so Buster gets a two and a half second head start. Well, Buster, this is probably the worst time to talk to you when you're trying to focus. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right, I won't talk to you then, but you've got a two and a half second head start, which isn't a great deal. No, it isn't. I'm just going to have to rely on my speed. Wish Glenn all the best. That's very good. And um, what's your state of mind at the moment, Glenn? Well, I think I've made a good friend in Buster, and I wish him all the best, and may the best man win. Absolutely. I'll see you both at the end. Good luck. Well, Glenn knows this is his biggest test, and so does his girlfriend, Julianne. Buster! You will go on my first whistle. Glenn, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Buster's up and running, the highs and lows, and followed by Glenn moving just as strongly. This one's going to be fast. Buster staying low in the bungee mesh. Cutting a swing through the undergrowth. Emerges safely, and so does Glenn, who looks to have pulled some time back. Up the road, Buster powerful, he's up and onto the handbike. Glenn's mum, Beryl, pedalling.
Glenn as well. Glenn's on the bike too. Look at the speed of these two guys. Buster's girlfriend, Louisa, getting behind him. Buster makes short work of the rollers onto the net, and Glenn treats the rollers with contempt. Gallops across for the net climb. Buster's brothers, Gary and Brian, there. Buster climbing strongly, good rhythm. Glenn not so smooth. Buster hits the top. He does make it look easy. Glenn getting into the swing of it now. And Julianne's on her feet. Buster's on the zip. The scramble up the net looks to have suited Buster best. His lead's extended. Splashes down. Here comes Glenn down that 90-foot line. Go on, Francis, you can look. Buster completes his balance beam test with flying colours. Next is trouble eight at time. Oh, Buster scoots up it like he wasn't even moving. Buster Reed from Huddersfield. He can't believe it. Terry and Louisa are delirious. The celebrations start here. Bart back down in the arena. Glenn's up the travel Oh, he's stumbling. And he's hanging on by his fingernails. But he won't let go now. A great contender pulls himself up from Newton Abbey, Northern Ireland. Glenn Wilkinson. Buster Reeves, world champion. Well done. Have you gladiated a medal? How does it feel? I can't describe it. It's just absolutely tremendous. Let's hear from Buster. Go and thank all your supporters and everybody who's been with you. Well done, Buster. Well done to Buster and well done to you too, Glenn. You've come such a long way to be with us, all the way from Northern Ireland. It's been terrific having you on the show. Have you enjoyed yourself? It's been a great privilege to be here. I just love this day. You know, I put my trust in the Lord Jesus and Buster came out on top. You know, certainly did. Well done, Buster. But you're a winner too for being on Gladiators. Let's hear it for Glenn Wilkinson. And a fine gesture there from Buster, handing his bouquet to Julianne and consoling Glenn's family. And his own folks are really proud of him. A winner in every sense. And Glenn's mum in tears. Glenn's got something to say, though. I would just like to ask this beautiful girl from Belfast, would you marry me? Goodness for that. Congratulations, Glenn and Julianne, and congratulations, Buster, from his grandma. And that time of 1 minute 10.3 seconds smashes the current men's record in the £1,000 Eliminator contest. Well, on his jacket, Buster got through, even though the Wolfman tried to stop him. Let's hope we can look forward to some more peaceful action next week. Join us here on The Gladiators. A Wolfman! For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators.